Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, JDAM. Variance Bombs JDAM. GBU-29B, GBU-30B, GBU-31B, GBU-32B, GBU-34B, GBU-35B, GBU-38B, GBU-54B, GBU-55B, GBU-56B, GBU-61B, GBU-62B, GBU-64B, GBU-72B. History and General Description in late 1991, the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy formulated common requirements for a new class of low-cost general-purpose precision-guided bombs. The program was initially labeled AWPGM, Adverse Weather Precision Guided Munition, but was eventually named JDAM, Joint Direct Attack Munition. After the USAF had successfully demonstrated a GPS-aided inertial, aka GPS-NS, guidance package in 1993, the goal for JDAM became the development of a low-cost GPS-NS add-on guidance kit for existing 1,000 pounds and 2,000 pounds class dumb bombs. In April 1994, development contracts were let to McDonnell Douglas and Martin Marietta after wind tunnel tests of both designs, McDonnell Douglas was selected in October 1995 as prime contractor for further development of JDAM. JDAM flight testing began in 1996, and the first LRIP, low-rate initial production, contract was awarded in April 1997 and December 1998, JDAM officially reached IOC, initial operational capability, on the first platform, the USAF's B-52H other aircraft soon followed, and today all US bombers and strike aircraft can carry JDAM weapons. JDAM add-on kits exist for a variety of bombs, including the 2,000 pounds 84 Malawian Quatches, Blue 109B, and Blue 117B, the 1,000 pounds 83 Malawian Quatches and Blue 110B, and the 500 pounds 82 Malawian Quatches and Blue 111B. For a detailed rundown of all versions, see variants section below. The main part of a JDAM add-on kit is the guidance and control section, which is mounted at the tail of the bomb body. This section houses the INS unit, the GPS receiver, the control electronics, and cruciform tailfins, three moving, one fixed, to steer the bomb. Additionally, strikes are fitted to the bomb body to enhance its stability and gliding capability. The strikes are mounted to the bomb's center body, except for the 500 pounds class bombs, 82 Malawian quatches, Blue 111B, where the strikes are on the nose because of bomb rack mounting requirements. Using full GPS aided INS guidance, the accuracy of JDAM is officially quoted as 13 meters 43 feet, but real figures are reportedly slightly better, around 10 meters 33 feet, when GPS is unavailable, e.g., because of jamming. Accuracy in INS only mode drops to 30 meters 100 feet CEP, but that's still good enough for many purposes, and therefore GPS jamming is far from disabling JDAM bombs. From typical operating altitudes, the standoff range of a JDAM is around 8 to 24 kilometers, 5 to 15 miles, at any time in the mission, the delivery aircraft's pilot is informed if he is within the valid drop envelope for the desired target coordinates. At the time of this writing, several tens of thousands of JDAM kits of all versions have already been built, and full-scale production is continuing the total production run may eventually reach up to 250,000 units. JDAM precision-guided bombs have effectively replaced dumb bombs as the standard general-purpose air-to-ground weapon of the USAF and US Navy in operations over Iraq in 2003, the majority of dropped munitions were guided JDAM bombs. Laser JDAM JDAM's big advantage over modern Paveway 3 laser-guided bombs is that JDAM operation is inherently simpler it is all-weather capable, because you don't need to laser designate the target, and it's a true fire-and-forget weapon. However, it is slightly less accurate than LGBs, and can't be used on moving targets efforts to supply JDAM with a terminal seeker to work around these shortcomings included Damask, Direct Attack Munitions Affordable Seeker, which demonstrated between 1997 and 1999 in IIR, Imaging Infrared, Seeker and Associated Control Algorithms to Improve CEP to 3 meters, 10 feet. Until 2006, no terminal seeker had been adopted as a standard option for JDAM, possibly because the availability of GPS ANS enhanced Paveway 2 and Paveway 3 laser-guided bombs made such a capability less urgent. But in June 2007, Boeing received a first production contract for 600 laser seeker add-on kits, 400 Air Force, 200 Navy, for JDAM. JDAM rounds fitted with such a seeker are known as LJDAM, Laser JDAM, and add the capability to attack moving targets to the weapon. Variants GBU-29B, GBU-30B The designations GBU-29B and GBU-30B were reserved for 2,000 pounds, GBU-29, and 1,000 pounds, GBU-30, 
class JDAM bombs with guidance kits from Martin Marietta because Martin Marietta lost the JDAM competition, no GBU-29 and minus 30 bombs were produced. Note reports that GBU numbers minus 29 and minus 30 referred to projected 250 pounds and 500 pounds class JDMs, respectively, are erroneous. GBU-31B the designation GBU-31B was allocated early in the JDAM program to 2,000 pounds class JDAM bombs with guidance kits from McDonnell Douglas, now part of Boeing. Current production JDAMs with 2,000 pounds class warheads are designated in the GBU-31V-B series. At least four different types of warhead can be used with the 2,000 pounds JDAM tail kits 84 Malawi and Kwacha standard 2,000 pounds LDGP, low drag general purpose, bomb. Blue 109B, 2,000 pounds class penetrator warhead. Blue 117AB, instead of the 84 Malawi and Quaches, the Navy can also use the Blue 117AB warhead in their GBU-31, the 2B series JDAMS. The Blue 117AB is externally identical to the 84 Malawi and Quaches, but uses the PBXN-109 thermally insensitive explosive. Blue 119B, crash PAD, prompt agent defeat, weapon, a blast fragmentation warhead to damage fixed biological chemical targets without contaminating the area, external shape identical to 84 Malawi and Quaches it can be assumed that other 2,000 pounds warheads, which use 84 Malawi and Quaches or Blue 109 casings, can also be fitted with GBU-31 series JDAM guidance kits this includes e.g. the Blue 118B and Blue 121B thermobaric bombs.